Hello, welcome to Scott's Odyssey. This is not going to be a normal video, because in this video, we're going to go looking for some treasure. And I'll tell you about the story of where that treasure comes from in just a moment. Apparently, there's treasure in these waters, and I'm going to try and find it. See you in a minute. Welcome back. If you've watched my videos before, thank you for your patronage. If you're new to Scott's Odyssey, well, welcome aboard. Uh, I wanted to preface this and try to keep it out of the wind a little bit. I wanted to preface this with the reason why I haven't been on as I set up some of the gear, the obnoxious people driving by. Um, I haven't put out a video in a couple of weeks because if you didn't hear through Facebook, Instagram, one of the other social medias, my mother passed away. Uh, and I took care of business and, and that's what that is. Um, but I also am prefacing this before the video that I shot yesterday, which now we're going to get to the fun part. But before we get to the fun part, you're going to have to go and watch me fuddle around and not be as good as uh, Chig and his army. But let's go take a look at what I was doing. My phone. My phone. Yeah, it was recording. Was. It's not now. Earwicks and spiders. That's what's keep coming out of these. So I figured I'd continue talking to you guys while I get ready. Let's make an adjustment here just a little bit. So the story I was told almost 20 years ago is that the house that I live in, the Odyssey HQ, was actually a home for a short bit of time. During the time that it was a home, there was a nephew, cousin, grandson, grand, whatever, to the person who was running the place. And apparently they were a thief. This story comes directly from them. I don't remember their name. I know that they live down in Maryland. Now this particular thief kid would go into the old folks' bedrooms and steal their shit their rings, their earrings, their money, silver coins, things along those lines. Now, I don't subscribe to the story necessarily, but he came and visited here one time, probably about five, six years ago. And he came up to the house and while he was talking to me, he said that he had done all those things. And he told me that during the biggest drought that they had ever seen along the Juniata River, he had come down to this very location where I am now and had everything in two glass one gallon jars and snuck out here at sunrise as far as he could go out, dug a hole, stuck it in the hole, filled it back over with rocks and then the next day the river, river was back up to its normal height. Now, I'm here at probably the lowest I've ever seen the river since I've moved to this particular area. And well, we are gonna go see if we can find this treasure. Oh, 
Alright, so I spent 10 minutes on this hole and found this large lead ring. Definitely not treasure. But that's a heck of a piece of lead. And soft. So, went between two pipes maybe? I'll look a little bit longer. Checking around the big rocks. Did find this guy here. Oh, hunk of angle iron. Been in there for a long time. Could have been part of the old bridge. I was on my way to pick up the tools and saw some white stuff. I don't know what this is. Let's see if we can find out. That's not white. That is. Uh, that's just a leaf. But I did see this and this. There we go. So this would have been late 1700s, early 1800s pottery. That's pretty nice. Nice piece of china. I'll put that in my little bag and take it out of here. But yeah, looking underneath the edges of these rocks. Let's see what else is out here. Got another ding off of this big rock. And it looks like, looks like copper. Copper wire. It is copper wire. Big old hunk of copper. Well, I came over here, and as you can see, it's got a heavy current, which means it's deeper, which does not go well with these guys. But, I got a really high ping, and I'm like, ah, it says somewhere between gold and silver. That's pretty interesting. Let me pull it up, and I dug out a big rock. After I got the big rock out, the ding went away, and I went, huh. So I checked downstream to see if, uh, see if it got pushed downstream a little bit. And it didn't, so I came back over to the rock that I had sitting on my foot, and it looked like that. Do you see it? you see what it is? Can you make it out? Let's see if we can't break her apart a little bit. Change it up. Oh, I almost went under on that one. Ugh. I can tell you it is exciting. Extremely heavy. Do you see what it is now? We'll take that one back with us. <laughs> we'll get that cleaned up. I know I'm not finding tons of stuff like Chig does, but I'm not Chig, and that's kind of what Chig does. But we'll definitely be coming out here a lot more times after this one. I'm gonna make this a regular part of the show. Very interested in doing this, and well, somewhere around this area there's allegedly a treasure i just waited too long in the season and it took me too long to get my hands on a proper metal detector to go around and be sweeping but i'll be looking and probably after this video there's going to be all these people coming out here looking for it if you find it i don't care if you keep it or not but if you find it i'd really like to record so you know where to find me so with that let's go back to looking for more interesting things because everything in this river is old as dirt, going all the way back to the 1700s. As you saw, just found that 1820s iron. Let's see what else we could find, if anything. All right, now you might not consider this the fun part, but for me, this is the real fun part. Um, that's when you bring home what you have, you try to identify what you have. If you didn't identify it already, you do a little cleanup in the river in the process, or wherever you happen to be scavenging for materials. Um, Try to identify it and see how much you can restore it, if you can restore it at all. I have a gross fascination with my free time of restoring old things, and I really do bring them all the way back to the modern day. Those who know me about that 
now that I really get into that a little bit on the deep side, I try not to take on the bigger projects like vehicles anymore, uh, but all the way down to uh, milkshake blenders from the 40s and 50s, uh, old military equipment, things like that. Anyway, we had a handful of things that we found uh, in the river and we're going to go over them and find out what they are. So let's get that started here. I'll get, I'll get the camera set up. All right, as long as you can hear my voice, I guess you don't really need my head in there. So let's go through the things that I found. Uh, let's do this simple one. So this is just a battery cable. It looks like a battery cable. Uh, I don't know what the material, the cable actually was. It's falling apart like hair. It's not copper. And you'll hear me pause every time an obnoxious vehicle goes by. Looks like there's some copper on the contact maybe. It's actually brown. Let's take a little scraper. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Can you see how that's brown? Like paint? I don't know what it is. Uh, I do know that it didn't ping really loud and it pinged faint the whole entire thing. Looks like paint all the way up the wire too. So maybe somebody had a coating on there. But nonetheless, piece of junk that was found right off the bat. One of the next things I found was a torch. And yes, it does work. It just doesn't make a spark, but you can hear that it's still full of gas. Let's see. So that was nice to get out of the river. Now this guy was interesting. This guy was pinging on the gold level. And that's because, well, oh, so much for that. He's mostly lead. He's hard lead. Mostly lead. I'm thinking he was a gasket for a uh, three inch concrete pipe. If anybody knows, leave a comment down below. It does look like a gasket or a seal for a three inch pipe. Yeah, I can't scratch it, but it did come up as lead, mostly lead on the meter. So let's go on to the next one. After the fire alarm, of course. All right, now that the fire alarm's done, let's go to the piece of china. Very nice piece of china here. Now, a lot of people find these things and they don't realize how old they really are. They just think it's a modern piece of china tossed in. But surprisingly enough, see if we can clean it. What I'm cleaning off of it isn't necessarily the dirt that was found on it when I pulled it out, because when I pulled it out of the water, it was nice and clean and clear. But as it dried, it got a whitish gray coat over it. And that would be leaching lead, proving the age of this. Uh, lead actually leaching out from within it that because it's been underwater it wasn't oxidizing and as soon as it came out of the water it fully oxidized but this guy is from sometime between the late 1700s and the early 1800s I'm gonna see if I can look up the specific pattern that's on there and see what it's depicting from what little is on there and I'll post that as a comment with the picture of it this piece which is already falling apart now that it's drying out this piece came up I thought it was some type of a a gear initially <clears throat> based on the way these crevices were and then there was a post but upon further inspection I'm gonna say this is the base of a lamp it is cast it's a little bit shiny it breaks very easily 
but I'll do a little cleanup on that and see if we can get a better picture because we got rocks, decades and decades of rocks on it. The final piece will be one that I'll actually video a little cleanup on, but it's an iron. It is an early to mid 1800s iron. It weighs, I'm going to say, seven to eight pounds. It is heavy, 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 but we're going to do a little cleanup and see what it is. Doing pretty good on this. Soon enough, I'll have enough removed to positively identify it, and I'll put that down on the screen saying who it was and where it was from. Let's go a little further. And yes, I have fun doing this. I hope you're enjoying it too. I know it's a little out of the normal, but you know, I gotta build back up to some things. Obviously, somebody was using it for <laughs> something it wasn't intended for. Uh, maybe it was running the river after a uh, spousal dispute. Who knows? Who knows why it was thrown in the river and why it's been sitting there for almost 200 years. Let's finish cleaning it up. biggest fear is hitting it too hard in the spot where everything comes off and it snaps the cast. There are other ways to do this. There's chemical ways to do it. I don't have that stuff available to me at this time.
Okay. So that's interesting. Can you see that piece of glass? It is transparent. And I don't know what it is. Maybe this got stuck in a house fire. That's a piece of glass. It has transparency. It's brown. I don't know if it's bottle glass. You can find that out. Alright, that broke apart like bottle glass that was sticking to it. And we're running out of light. Lots of sunlight so the camera lights on and this is what we got from it with the initial cleaning I'm gonna do a little more cleaning on it see what else I could pull out of it and get you some pictures of that so we'll do that all right so I did a lot more deep cleaning on it and they gave it some more brushing and this is what we ended up with Isn't that beautiful he's just gorgeous little thing that still weighs a ton. Now, what I will tell you is, although I have no idea why it was in the actual river, um, I will say that as I was doing a cleaning on it, the smell, it smells like iron now. <laughs> it just smells like cast iron. But uh, when I was cleaning it, it was not a firewood smell. It was not a coal smell. It was very distinctly the horrible, horrible smell of a house fire uh, with extra chemicals in it. Um, so that's probably what happened. There was a house fire. It was along the river and it got found in the debris and somebody just went, whoop, and chucked it in. Uh, again, don't know definitely. Uh, I'll get you the time period and the brand and all that stuff and then we'll continue on. All right, so what I'd really like you guys to do is leave comments down below if you, if you found this entertaining and if you want to see more things like this or if you want to see uh, the process of other things that I've actually done restoration on. Uh, I'd be more than happy to show you guys those pictures or I could just put them up on Facebook or on Instagram. You let me know. Here comes another troll car. Um, so yeah, the metal detecting thing, it was a lot of fun, especially in the river. Uh, I didn't think it was going to be that much fun. It was very, very relaxing. Anyway, leave a comment. Give a like if you liked it. Give a dislike if you didn't like it. Subscribe for more videos like this, as well as our normal historical videos, which I'm getting back into um, as time permits and as I take care of family matters and such. 
Anyway, as always, I thank you for watching and I'll see you with my dirty pointer finger in the next video. Mm-hmm.